In September of 2017, when Hurricane Maria, a deadly Category 5 hurricane, hit parts of the Caribbean and devastated Puerto Rico, most of the Americans didn't even realize their people have been widely affected in this natural disaster. It's because around 50% of Americans during the time didn't know that Puerto Ricans are in fact U.S. citizens. And a lot of people even to this day don't know that Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory. It's because Puerto Rico's situation is very confusing. And here's why. Puerto Rico, since 1917, is in a state of limbo and has been around 106 years. The island has not received a statehood. After the Spanish-American War, Puerto Rico was acquired by the United States. And since then, this beautiful Caribbean island became an unincorporated territory of the United States with official Commonwealth status. Which means this island is neither a sovereign country on its own, nor a state of the US, but is still somehow owned by the United States. And not just the political status of Puerto Rico, but the status of Puerto Ricans is equally confusing. All Puerto Ricans who are born on the island naturally receive citizenship, but not as Puerto Ricans, but as US citizens, which also give them a right to travel freely to the mainland US or can even stay permanently in the United States. Nevertheless, Puerto Rican Americans are disenfranchised at the national level, which means they don't have the right to vote for the president or the vice president, but they can still vote for the presidential primaries. But this lack of right to directly vote for the president has a direct impact on the federal funding to Puerto Rico. In the US, the federal funding and resources are often distributed based on the representation and voting powers of states in Congress. Puerto Rico's limited voting rights impacts the island's ability to advocate for and secure federal funding for various programs, infrastructure projects, and social services. This lack of full voting rights contributes to disparities in treatment between Puerto Rico and other U.S. states. For example, Puerto Rico faces limitations in accessing certain federal programs, including Medicaid, unlike other states, which can result in disparities in healthcare services and other important funding for social welfare. However, this half-state, half-not-state situation of Puerto Rico still gives the island its own legislative assembly and even the governor, which means Puerto Rico is still subject to U.S. compulsory draft and the people can join the U.S. military. But the limbo state of the island is not something new and more often than not always becomes a part of political campaigns. We're giving Puerto Ricans the tools they need to build their own economic futures. Puerto Rico's current status has been a long-standing political and social debate. Some advocates have stated argue that it would give Puerto Ricans greater political representation and greater access to federal programs and benefits. However, opponents of statehood argue that it could also have negative economic and cultural impacts. People vouching for the statehood argue that if Puerto Rico becomes a state, it would be eligible for a broader range of federal funding programs, including funding for infrastructure projects, education, healthcare, transportation, and social services. This could help Puerto Rico to address pressing needs and improve the overall quality of life on the island. However, people opposing the statehood argue that Puerto Rico would lose all the benefits in terms of tax advantages and economic incentives the island currently receives, which could potentially lead to increased taxes and changes in the island's economic landscape. And therefore, there are concerns that Puerto Rico's economy may not be strong enough to withstand the potential economic adjustments that could come with the statehood. Another important concern regarding the state of the island is the threat to the loss of identity, because Puerto Rico has a very distinct cultural identity and a unique history that sets it apart from both the United States and other Latin American countries. Some worry that statehood could lead to the dilution or loss of Puerto Rican culture and autonomy, as the island would need to adhere more closely to the U.S. federal laws and regulations. Some groups also argue that not just the culture, but languages and traditions in Puerto Rico doesn't go very well with the Americans just because of the fact that the U.S. is predominantly an English country. In contrast, Spanish is the predominant language spoken in Puerto Rico, and it holds an important place in Puerto Rican culture. While English is widely spoken on the island as well, concerns have been raised about the potential erosion of Spanish language and cultural heritage if Puerto Rico becomes a state. Some people also argue that Puerto Rico is so far away from the mainland U.S. that operating it as a state is more challenging. 
But that is in fact a very flawed statement because Puerto Rico is just 1,600 kilometers or 1,000 miles away from Miami, while the distance between Los Angeles and Honolulu in the Aloha state is almost two and a half times more at 4,100 kilometers. And Hawaii still very well manages to function as one of the 50 states in the country. However, the island is facing a lot of economical challenges, limited support from the US, which has put Puerto Rico exposed to poverty as well. After Hurricane Maria devastated the island in 2017, it has become increasingly difficult for the Puerto Rican administration to cope from the disaster. Weather phenomena like cyclones and tornadoes are very common in various parts of mainland U.S., and unlike Puerto Rico, if any U.S. states suffer from loss of property and loss of lives due to such natural events, it has access to all the aid from the federal government, first responders, and disaster management teams to rebuild public infrastructures like roads, electricity, and even housing. So the argument finds itself stuck in what's important for the current situation and future of the island preservation of cultural identity, or possible dilution of identity but getting access to every possible federal and state support. And people have different opinions in regard to Puerto Rico's statehood. One poll conducted by Gallup in 2019 showed that more than 60% of Americans believe that Puerto Rico should become a state and have the right to vote for the president, while 27% believe they should not. Another poll conducted by NBC News and The Wall Street Journal in 2017 found that 48% of Americans supported statehood for Puerto Rico, while 26% favored continuing Puerto Rico's current status as U.S. territory, and 20% believed Puerto Rico should become an independent country. While people may have different opinions for Puerto Rico's status, mostly in favor of the statehood, however, the ultimate power resides with the U.S. Congress to grant a statehood. So why hasn't this been done yet? It's because granting statehood is a very serious and complex procedure that may take many decades to include a piece of land in the list of union. Admitting a new state into the union involves legal and logistical complexities. It requires drafting and passing legislations, the creation of new electoral districts, potential changes to federal programs and funding allocations, and the establishment of government structures and processes specific to the new state. Addressing these intricacies can take time and thorough analysis. Also, Congress deals with numerous issues simultaneously, ranging from domestic policies to international affairs. Therefore, a state of Puerto Rico may not always be the top priority on the legislative agenda. Other pressing matters such as economic issues, healthcare, infrastructure, and national security can take precedence, causing delays in the consideration of Puerto Rico's statehood. Therefore, to relieve some of the political pressure from the island's administration, internationally, several organizations have called for the U.S. government to expedite the process to allow self-determination in Puerto Rico while considering Puerto Rico a Caribbean nation with its own national identity. For instance, the United Nations Special Committee on Decolonization has called for the United States, quote, to allow the Puerto Rican people to take decisions in the sovereign manner and to address their urgent economic and social needs, including unemployment, marginalization, insolvency, and poverty." End quote. Puerto Rico has held several non-binding referendums to gauge public opinion on its political status. These referendums have presented various options, including statehood, maintaining the current status as a U.S. territory, and pursuing independence. While the results of these referendums have shown varying degrees of support for statehood, they have served as platforms for Puerto Rican to express their preferences and aspirations. The U.S. Congress has proposed Puerto Rico Self-Determination Act, which aims to establish a process for Puerto Rico to determine its political future. The legislation would create a status convention in which Puerto Ricans could debate and propose options for Puerto Rico's political status, including statehood, independence, and other possibilities. The act is aimed at facilitating a formal process to determine Puerto Rico's future. Although it's difficult to accurately predict the future political status of Puerto Rico, the island requires attention more than ever in terms of investment, funding, and aid, especially after the hurricane of 2017, and more inclusivity in order to operate more efficiently as a U.S. territory. This is Stories Across, and thank you for watching.